I thought my childhood was difficult, but yours, I think, was more difficult. You had a very violent father, and so you had to, that was your primary challenge in childhood. Yes. And without that primary challenge, you probably wouldn't be here now. I wouldn't. And, and I, we all, you know, I, there were four boys in my family, and we all used different strategies to deal with the pain, because he was an abusive and violent person, and a wife batterer, and all these things. And, um, and very unpredictable. And um, sometimes among us, we'd get depressed or try to use humor or whatever. I became the family peacemaker, which became my profession later on. If you know, <laughs> anyway. um, but it's partly what took me to the monastery. I, I had a lot of suffering. And as you said earlier on, our education system focuses outwardly on reading and, and mathematics and science. But it doesn't focus on the heart. It doesn't teach us either to ask who are we or what do we do with the suffering of life or the mystery of aging, none of it. And I needed something desperately. So it was really that calling inside to find some help. And then I read these amazing books about Zen masters and I said, OK, I want to find one and see if you know that could help. <laughs> and uh, fortunate, fortunately, I was actually able to find some good teachers. And yes. That you, you had this remarkable experience of really doing it on your own. Yes. Which is both unusual. I mean, a lot of people try, but also, you know, it, in many ways, much more difficult because yes. you didn't have anybody to talk to to say, well, what happened? Yes. Uh, this is why I had to seek people out after that shift to understand it. So I went to Buddhist monasteries, I talked to some monks and I sought I, other places I went to, I investigating, t trying to understand. And it's through Buddhism that I understood and began to understand a lot that had happened to me, which otherwise I wouldn't have been able to understand at all.